Now let's do an example involving a mass spectrometer. An accelerator, velocity selector, and mass spectrometer are used to analyze the carbon-12 and carbon-14 content of a sample. The carbon is positively singly ionized. You want the distance between the carbon-12 and the carbon-14 at the detector to be one inch. With what speed must the particles enter the magnetic field of the mass spectrometer? What accelerating voltage is required to accelerate the carbon-12 to the correct speed, and what accelerating voltage is required to accelerate the carbon-14 to the correct speed? What voltage is required across the plates of the velocity selector? Does it need to be readjusted for carbon-14? And the first thing I did, of course, is redraw the diagram. And the second thing I'll do is figure out the sign of the plates in order to make sure that my potential differences are correct. In order to make sure that the positive charge is accelerated, we need the plate on the left to be positive and the plate on the right to be negative. Like so. Now to figure out the sign of the plates in the velocity selector, the first thing I need to do is find the direction of the magnetic force and find the direction of the electric force. Because in a velocity selector, the magnetic force is equal to the electric force. So there's no information about the electric field. So we'll start with the magnetic field. The magnetic field points into the page, so I place my hand along the motion of the positive ions. I put my palm, or I bend my fingers, into the page, and my thumb points up. And here is the direction of the magnetic force. This means that the electric force must be in the opposite direction. If a positive particle feels an electric force in the downward direction, that means that the top plate must be positive and the bottom plate must be negative. Like so. Now we want the distance between the carbon-12 and the carbon-14 at the detector to be one inch. And since the particles have a semicircular trajectory, it means that the distance between the entry point and the arrival at the detector is equal to one diameter. Therefore, we want the diameter of the carbon-14 to be one inch bigger than the diameter of the trajectory of the carbon-12. And we can write it this way, d carbon-14 minus d carbon-12 is equal to 0.0254 meters. And since the diameter of a circle is equal to two times the radius, we can write that we want the distance between the two at the detector to be two times the radius of the carbon-14 minus the radius of the carbon-12. We will divide both sides by two, so we get d over two, and we are going to replace the radius of the carbon-14 with the formula for the trajectory of a charged particle in a uniform magnetic field. So we get the mass of the carbon-14s times the speed divided by q times b, and then we replace the radius of the carbon-12 with the mass of the carbon-12 times the speed divided by q times b. We can multiply both sides by q times b, so that means that on the left we have d times q times b divided by 2, and then we replace the mass of the carbon-12 and the mass of the carbon-14 with 14 times the atomic mass unit for the carbon-14 and 12 times the atomic mass unit for the carbon-12. 14 minus 12 is 2, of course, so we can take that 2m and divide both sides by it so that on the left we now have d times q times b divided by 4m. The 4m comes from 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by m and that should give us the speed at which the carbon-12 and the carbon-14 must enter the magnetic field. Let's plug some numbers in then d, which is 2.54 10 to the negative 2 meters, multiplied by q, which is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19, multiplied by b, which is half a tesla, divided by 4, multiplied by one atomic mass unit, 1.7 times 10 to the negative 27, is 
3.00 times 10 to the 5 meters per second. Now we have to figure out the potential differences necessary to accelerate the carbon-12 and the carbon-14 to these speeds. And for that, I'm going to leave the diagram on top of the picture, and I'm going to use conservation of energy to find the potential differences that are needed. So initial potential energy plus initial kinetic energy plus the work done by non-conservative forces has to be equal to the final potential energy plus the final kinetic energy. The initial potential energy is Q times the initial potential plus the initial kinetic energy of the ions, which is zero, plus the work done by non-conservative forces, which is zero because there's no non-conservative forces in this problem, is equal to the final potential energy Q times V final plus the final kinetic energy. If I put all my potentials on the right hand side, I get minus Q times delta V, and remember the delta V stands for V final minus V initial, has to be equal to one half MV squared. Now you might be worried that there's a negative sign in front of the uh, right hand side of the equation, and that on the left hand side there's a mass which is positive, and a speed squared which is obviously positive. This means that if delta V is a positive number, Q has to be negative, which makes sense. If you want to accelerate a negative charge, you need to get it to move from a place that is negative to a place that's positive. The other thing could happen as well. If Q is positive, then delta V needs to be negative. And look at our picture. Our initial plate has to be positive and the final plate has to be negative. So V final has a lower value than V initial. So negative Q multiplied by delta V will be a positive number. So both sides of our equation are positive and we have nothing to worry about. Solving for delta V gives us minus MV squared over 2Q. For carbon 12, um, mass is 12 times the atomic mass unit, 1.7 times 10 to the negative 27 kilos, multiplied by 3 times 10 to the 5 meters per second, and then the whole thing is squared, divided by 2 times 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. So the potential difference needed to accelerate carbon-12 to a speed of 3 times 10 to the 5 meters per second is minus 5740 volts or if you're using um, scientific notation then minus 5.74 kilovolts. For the carbon-14 the potential difference is 14 times the atomic mass unit 1.7 times 10 to the negative 27 kilos multiplied by the speed 3 times 10 to the 5 meters per second squared and divided by 2 times the charge of the ions, 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. And that gives us a potential difference of minus 6,694 volts, or negative 6.69 kilovolts. So there's roughly a 1,000 volt difference between the two. Now, to figure out the potential difference between the two plates on the velocity selector, we are going to need two formulae. The first one for the speed of particles in a velocity selector, which is the electric field divided by the magnetic field, and the second one for the potential difference between two plates, which is delta V is equal to negative E times D. We can combine the two equations to eliminate the electric field between the two plates, so that gives us negative delta V over D times B. We already know which plate is positive and which plate is negative, and we already know the direction of the electric field between the two plates. So all we're really worried about now is the absolute value of the potential difference. We want its magnitude. So we can write that the magnitude of the potential difference is equal to the speed multiplied by the distance between the plates multiplied by the magnetic field. So 3 times 10 to the 5 meters per second 
multiplied by 0 0.02 meters multiplied by half a Tesla is 3,000 volts, or 3 kilovolts. Now, a velocity selector is just that. It selects velocities. So as long as the carbon-12 and the carbon-14 have been accelerated to the same speed, we do not need to readjust the voltage across the plates of the velocity selector. Let's just for fun check what the radius of the trajectory of our particles are. So using r is equal to mv over qb, we find that the radius of the carbon-12 is 7.65 centimeters. And then we find that the radius for the carbon-14 is 8.93 centimeters. And then 2 times the radius of the carbon-14 minus 2 times the radius of the carbon-12 is 2.56 centimeters, which means 1 inch when you take into account the fact that some precision may have been lost in the calculations. Awesome! Here is the full solution on two pages. Spread the joy of physics.